Hey guys, what is up? In my last video, we talked about graphics cards, how to find them, how to pick them. Well, in this video, we're continuing the Build a PC series, and we're going to talk all about CPUs slash processors and how to find and pick those. My name is Riley, and once again, cue that club music. So as I said, this video is going to be all about CPUs. So we're going to be talking about determining your uses, finding a price range, AMD or Intel, compatibility, speed, integrated graphics, thermal design power specification, bottlenecking, and where to start looking. So first, we have to start with determining your uses. This is very, 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 very important because you don't want to buy a $1,000 CPU that you're going to use just for browsing the web. So here's what you have to do. You have to see what kind of user are you. Are you the type of user that just goes home and you browse the web, the web all day? If you do, that's fine, but you don't need a super powerful CPU for that. Or are you the type of person that comes home and plays some pretty graphic intensive games out there? If so, you're going to need some more powerful CPUs. Maybe you're the type of person that does a lot of video editing, more powerful CPU. So you need to establish what kind of user you are so that you're not going not powerful enough or too powerful. Very important. Establish your uses. The next thing we're going to be talking about is finding a price range. Finding a price range is a continuation of this. So now that you know your uses, now you need to find out how much you want to spend for your CPU. Here's what I recommend and what most people recommend is about 30% of your build cost. So if you want to build a build that is $1,000, maybe you want to spend about $300 for your CPU or go up or down from there. So establish a price range. That way you can kind of narrow down what you're looking for. The next thing we're going to be talking about is AMD or Intel. And this is the age old debate. AMD and Intel both make processors, each good in their own regards, but some are better at certain things and some are worse at certain things. Performance wise, it is generally regarded that Intel is going to be better. If you're going to go for a higher end CPU, you're going to want Intel just because that's their area of expertise. On the flip side, if you're going to go for a cheaper CPU, you can, you can slide by with an AMD card. Intel also has their own lower range, but AMD is generally the better bang for your buck if you're going for a lower end CPU. Integrated graphics, which we will get into in a little bit, and I kind of got into in my last video, check the description for that. AMD is generally going to be better, they just put more time and effort into their integrated graphics. But we'll be getting all into that later, so don't worry about that just yet. Heat management. Intel generally takes the cake here, uh, no specific reason, they're just better with distributing the heat and cooling down the CPUs. And then, if you, like I said, budget, AMD is almost always going to win, but at the end of the day you really can't go wrong with either of these, so it's really just up to you if you're an Intel kind of person or if you're an AMD kind of person. So you can make that call. And yeah, just pick AMD or Intel. So next we're gonna be talking about compatibility. Compatibility is extremely important because you don't wanna get a CPU that doesn't fit into your motherboard. And that's really the only thing you're gonna to have to worry about here. You have to make sure your processor fits with your motherboard. You can buy any other kind of graphics card or RAM, anything else, but you need to make sure that your CPU works in that motherboard and you can determine that by looking at the sockets. So Intel and AMD are each going to have their own motherboards that work with their processors. So that's the first thing you gotta look for. Then let's say if you have Intel, you're gonna have to look for the actual socket. It'll be LGA XXXX, something like that. For example, LGA 1155. So you have to make sure that the processor you're looking at says that it's LGA 1155, otherwise it's not going to fit into that motherboard. 
If you haven't chosen a motherboard yet, that's fine. You're gonna have to choose a motherboard that fits with that CPU. But if you already have your motherboard, you need to make sure that your processor is gonna fit in that motherboard. AMD is gonna be AM2, AM2+, plus, AM3. The same thing as Intel, you just need to make sure that the processor AM2 or whatever matches with the motherboard AM2. So that's really all you gotta look for, for compatibility in that regards for processors. The next thing we're gonna be looking at is speed. Speed is where we kinda of get into the nitty gritty things of processors. So first off is cores. You're gonna see this everywhere. Multi-core, single core. That's really where the big debate comes in. This is where determining your uses come in. So as you just come home and you browse the web and maybe do some light gaming maybe, then you can slide by with a single core processor. Otherwise, video editing, um, games, more intensive things on your machine, or if you just want better performance, you're gonna want some multi-cores. So two, four, eight, that's really where we get from there. Now it's important to remember that that doesn't determine everything. Cores are not everything, okay? So then you have to look into the frequency. Frequency is how fast those cores work. So if you have a bajillion cores, but they're not working very much, then you know it's not like it even matters how many cores you have. The frequency determined in hertz is how fast those cores work. So you're gonna want more cores and more frequency. You have to balance those two out, otherwise they're just going to be nothing. Same thing goes if you only have one core, but it has a really high frequency, then it's still going to be pretty good if it has that high frequency, but it's not going to go any higher than that. The next thing you're going to want to look at is, or not look at, but you have to remember that a lot of programs and software, they don't use unlimited cores. So when you make that software, they're gonna have like a preset amount of cores that it's gonna end up using, whether that be two, three, four, whatever it is, the amount of cores may not even matter. So you'll see on a lot of AMD processors, they like to throw in this higher core count, but a lot of software will not even use all those cores, which mean all those other cores aren't gonna be utilized. So keep that in mind when you're looking at these kind of things. The next thing you're gonna look at under speed is the cache. Cache is basically the processor's own little mini RAM. So whenever it needs to, whenever it needs to store some kind of process that it did, instead of putting that onto the system RAM, it has its own little cache that it's gonna put in there. You're gonna wanna hire cache, that way you can store more and it'll be faster overall. The next thing you wanna look at is hyperthreading. Hyperthreading is an Intel specific thing, but basically it just means that the cores are going to work even faster than they normally would. And this is why I said earlier, Intel is generally better at performance in those higher range cards because of this hyperthreading. Makes a really big difference. So the next thing is benchmarks. You want to make sure that you're looking at a good card and the best way to do that is honestly looking at benchmarks online. So I'll put this boom up here, and you can also look down in the description for the link to this, but go and do some research on the CPU that you buy. That way you're getting the best bang for your buck. Go look at these benchmarks, see what has the highest numbers, and choose your card from there. So you can look at the benchmarks and just scroll down and down and down until you find one that fits your price range. Then go look up some other benchmarks and compare and contrast and see what really fits your uses and what you want to buy. So the next thing I'm going to be looking at is integrated graphics. Integrated graphics, I kind of covered in my last video, if you want to go back and look at that there. But I'll kind of cover it in here. Integrated graphics is if you don't have a dedicated graphics card that plugs into your motherboard, you can slide by with integrated graphics, which is basically built into your processor. It's not gonna get you very far, although it is getting better, but if you want a game and stuff like that, you don't want integrated graphics, you want dedicated, but you can probably run Minecraft or something like that, and if you're not a power user, you can definitely get away with integrated graphics. 
but you want to look at that if that's something you're into you want to try to find the best graphics card or not the best graphics card, the best integrated graphics for your CPU and once again you can do that with benchmarks and that's really the best way you can get through with that the next thing we're going to be looking at and this is a mouthful thermal design power specification so what this means is basically CPUs get extremely hot I don't know if this is true, but it's basically the hottest component in your build. So even when you have these massive fans that sit over it, they will get very, very hot. And the hotter they get, generally, it's not going to last as long. So you want to make sure that you're getting a processor that deals with this heat efficiently. You're always going to have a fan on top of it, so make sure you're always buying a fan. But even with the fans sometimes, certain processors are going to be better at staying cooler than others. And you're going to want a processor that stays cooler under a load than one that gets hotter because it's going to last longer. And if that goes out, it can affect your motherboard, it can affect this and that. And you just want to make sure you're getting a processor that won't get too, too hot. Very important, very important. Look it up online for whatever processor you get. The next thing we're going to be looking at is bottlenecking just like the graphics card if you have a processor that is super powerful but everything else sucks then what's the point okay you're gonna bottleneck yourself like I said in the last video bottlenecking is having one component that is held back because everything else isn't good enough so if you have a powerful processor and everything else sucks your processor is not gonna reach its full potential because it can't everything else is holding it back so you want to make sure everything else in your build is powerful enough to support that processor. If it's not, it's not like it's the end of the world or anything. You're just going to end up wasting your money. So the final thing we're going to be talking about is where to start. And this is very, very confusing because you just see a bunch of processors out there. How do you start? It's, it, it's, it's impossible. So here's what I recommend you do. I've already given you that website of benchmarks and that's where you want to start. Go to that website, it'll be divided into higher end cards, lower end cards, um, medium cards, so on and so forth. Not cards, processors, sorry, ignore that. Go on there, if you want a high end processor, click on that, look at the benchmarks, and the price will be off to the right. Go down until you find one that fits your price range. Uh, once you find one, then just keep going down, find a couple others, compare and contrast and eventually you should be able to find a processor that suits your need. So that's really all I can recommend at that point because it does get a little bit confusing. You can go into learning about different tiers of levels and whatnot, like Intel has the i3, i5, i7, and then you can go in and learn the generations and so on and so forth but that all gets a little bit confusing if you go on that benchmark and you just go down and find one that fits your price you will be golden so that's all i have to say for today thank you for watching make sure you stay tuned and subscribe for my next video i'm not too sure what it is maybe power supplies maybe ram i'm not too sure yet but it will be something continuing this building a PC series. If you like this video, make sure to leave a thumbs up. If not, leave a thumbs down and leave a comment telling me why and I'll try to work on the video. I know in this stage it's a little awkward. I'm still not really getting used to the camera thing, but my videos will get better as time continues, I promise. So thank you for watching and I'll see you. Thank you for watching. Continues, I